And thanks for listening, because these are interesting people, and you're about to find out how interesting as I uh, make my way down this spectacular list of questions. If there's anything I missed that you want to mention, the first thing on the list is briefly tell us a little bit about yourself, but I think I pretty much did that. But if there's something like right now that's happening right now that's key that you'd like to mention about what, you, what you're working on, then now would be the time. Dave, you want to start? Uh, let's see. Um, we're happy to be back from COVID. So there's a lot going on. Um, we have an exhibition right now that opened at the end of October called Contemporary Latin Art of, no, Contemporary Art of Latin American Diaspora. Uh, 24 artists, 14 of which have never exhibited at the council before. Um, pretty spectacular exhibition. It was curated by uh, Dr. Juliana Ferrero from uh, Broward County. She um, runs an organization called Nomad Art Project. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, and we're gearing up for our second Art and Tourism Summit on equity, diversity, and inclusion. That'll be August 29th and 30th at the Convention Center. So a lot more information coming uh, about that soon. Awesome. Scotty, anything I missed that sure, uh, you want to talk about? I'm a person artist, actually, but for you guys to know, I um, have a couple of um, shows coming up. It's going to be at Spectrum in Miami during our Files of Art Miami Art Week um, in, at Wynwood, which starts on November 30th through December 4th. I have a show coming up with Peach in January. I also have a, a solo show in Key West in February. So nice. it's, on. It's, 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 been, it's been a busy couple of couple months coming up. and. Uh, you know, I also spend a lot of time, I'm an art facilitator. I do spend some meditation in art groups um, at different treatment centers. Right here, I'm a, I'm a sober, I'm a man in recovery, 16 years sober, and uh, we'll get into that at some point. But, uh, you know, that's definitely a huge part of my existence is um, checking out people in the community and, and that sort of thing. So it's, uh, it's good to be here. Angelica, what did we miss? Um, well, I mean, you kind of covered it all, but as we're just now getting into season, we're coming back into COVID. I mean, all of our exhibitions, we hold monthly exhibitions the first Thursday of every month, except December, because we have our Basel for that first week, so we're gonna be moving it to the second Thursday. Um, but I mean, I would just keep kind of in contact with the Palm Beach Design Showroom because we are constantly doing artist lectures, artist events, live demonstrations. We represent uh, artists from over 25 countries um, so a lot of them are coming into into town for the season. So we're going to be gearing up for an amazing season. And um, no, I'm just excited to be here. Thank you. Um, you guys can use your microphone. Yeah, just turn them. Oh, just turn them on. Put them to the on position. They should probably pretty much carry it. Hello. There you go. There you go. You don't have to put them up. Just yeah. There you go. I'm just have a photo on here. excited with Zero and Space to be rolling out an e-commerce component, actually not just for our artists to be able to uh, showcase and sell their work, but uh, we're actually going to open it up for outside artists uh, as well <coughs> that want to participate. And we're integrating a lot of new technology. We have some virtual reality walkthroughs of our studio spaces uh, that potential buyers will be able to click on an artist's studio space and their artwork and potentially just purchase it virtually as if they were there physically. Um, we're trying to address a lot of problems and a lot of the feedback that uh, artists that are on Saatchi and Artsy often tell us that they don't like being on those platforms for those reasons, but they feel that they have to be on those platforms. So hoping to address that with this e-commerce solution and we're preparing to roll out um, our fifth annual Fort Lauderdale Art and Design Week in January. The last week in January, we have uh, over 100 events slated uh, annual architecture fair with the AIA local chapter of Fort Lauderdale and uh, a lot of great things in all facets of the arts, spoken word, dance, performance, fashion, architecture, food, music. So uh, you can find out more at Fort Lauderdale Art and Design Week at PLADW. And we did have some preliminary conversations with the Culture Council about an open uh, Palm Beach County wide open studio weekend, uh, which were, I guess, targeting May. Uh, which would be a really nice thing, and we're glad to support Palm Beach Culture Council and uh, love everything you guys do. So glad to be here in Palm Beach County. Thanks,
So some of these questions are, are pointed to someone. It doesn't mean other people can't chime in, but um, so I've got a few notes. And this first one goes to you, Dave. Um, seen some uh, substantial changes in the Cultural Council. When you arrived, what was the number one thing you felt was needed to help improve art and culture in Palm Beach County? And were you able to accomplish this? Uh, any other goals you've set thus far? So I think one of the um, things that has always um, been a part of my uh, career and what I think is most important is making sure that um, we live by the mantra that art really is for all. Um, and so that really drives everything that I do. Um, and uh, the council, the Cultural Council has a wonderful 40 year history of good programming, lots of, of grant funding to cultural organizations and all of that. Um, but my, my notion of, of what a local arts service agency is, and that's what the Cultural Council is, um, is a service organization. Um, and that means that we only exist to, to make sure that we are supporting and serving our core constituents, and those are professional artists uh, and cultural organizations. So um, that was the first thing that, that I did when I came into the Cultural Council was um, what, what I might have perceived as more of an interior looking organization. Um, I really wanted to, to change that up. Um, I, I really feel the Council was doing some great work in terms of cultural organization support. But in terms of funding artists and making sure that artists felt welcome and, and uh, part of the conversation, I felt that we probably had a lot of work to do. So that was one of the things that we really focused on. Um, and when I talk about art, I'm talking about it in the most broad definition. So um, when we talk about artists, I include dancers and singers and poets and film writers and, and all genres of, of art included in that, as well, of course, as visual artists. Um, so. You know, we were doing a lot of funding, a lot of programs for cultural organizations, but that's only half the, the equation, right? We need to make sure that we've got um, wonderful artists that are uh, thriving in our communities and able to connect with audiences and sell their work and show their, um, their craft. Um, so that was really one of the key things that, that I felt important to do. Um, and and it, it was sort of a, an evolution for the council to really take on this service mantra. Um, and right before the, the um, pandemic hit, uh, we rebranded the organization. It's very, very subtle. We used to be called the Cultural Council of Palm Beach County. We're now the Cultural Council for Palm Beach County. And that one word switch, I think encapsulates what we're, what we're really trying to do and what we, what we exist for. And that is to serve our constituents, organizations and artists in Palm Beach County. Um, I feel I'm doing my best work when I get out of the way and allow all of you to soar. That's really what I think is the most important thing. Um, so all of our work has, has been headed in that direction. We used to, um, if, if you wanted to show in, in our smaller gallery, galleries, you had to be a member. Um, we've removed that, um, that requirement now. In fact, we've gone to an open call for artists. Anybody that wants to exhibit in that can can uh, submit their information and we have a panel made up of visual arts professionals that review those, um, those submissions. Um, so we're, we're trying to tear down all those barriers. We've created um, all these artist services that are removed from behind a paywall. They're all free now for artists. Um, so we've got artists uh, e-newsletters, we've got a database of artists that we're now sending out to um, corporations and people that are looking for artists to find. So it's free to sign up, it's free to get involved. We have a whole series of professional development opportunities for artists. These aren't how to be a better painter or how to be a better dancer. These are how to be a better small business owner, mm -hmm. right? Um, how to do what you need to do better. Um, and these are all free now, we used to charge for them. So all of this is here to support your work and the efforts that you're doing um, to, to make your, your work uh, engaging and, and connecting with the audiences that you need to connect with. So that's probably a long answer, but a short answer in, in terms of everything that's been going on. Um, but at, at, the, at, at the root of it is art is for all. And if we are not allowing that to happen, then we are failing. Um, so that's, that's what we're doing. Great, great, and we thank you for that. Um,
as a local artist, uh, I probably speak for a lot of people. I can feel the, I can really feel the difference, and even have had uh, the opportunity to take advantage of some of those programs for sure. Okay, um, next on the list would be a something we can all agree upon, but should be discussed and and. Uh, with a considerable decline in arts education in public schools, what role do any of you play in the help to transition this dilemma? As it go for it. Um, fortunately, uh, well, fortunately, unfortunately, uh, I'm starting an arts writing scholarship uh, to give to uh, a student youth that's looking to pursue writing about the arts. I initially got started in the arts and culture space as a blogger, as a covering the arts and culture in the early stages of Continuum. Um, and then fortunately the way things shaked out, that ultimately led me to creative entrepreneurship and community building. Cool. But sans that um, opportunity, I might not have been able to make the impact I am now. And uh, we all know the impact of um, the cuts on arts writing. If nobody's writing about the arts, then how are people outside of the arts supposed to find out? So I'm, I'm Little, uh, you know, little platform uh, had a one of our zero empty spaces artists, uh, Bob Takar, in our Boca Raton Innovation Campus space, created artwork. He graciously donated it to this cause to create a scholarship um, to hopefully, you know, give some some youth a, a leg up. And that's just one little blip on the arts education, arts writing sphere that hopefully will help make a difference and help somebody ex extend their reach potentially and pursue their passion or pursue their Appreciate that. their interest. Yeah. It's a bunch of little blips. I, mean, I, I think for me, I think it, it's important for artists to be, it's, it has to be attractive as a, as a business, right? Sure. So artists, artists need to know that this is a potential to make money at, at this as a career. You know, I know I, this is really a second career, career for me, but you know, over the past couple of years, it's been an amazing process to be able to like actually open a corporation and, and pay taxes and, and all these things that, that, that I think a lot of a lot of our students you know, students in high school have no idea that, that art is actually a career. I, I get a lot of um, um I go home say talk to my friends like, when are you gonna get a real job? Right? Still, right? Still. And I'm almost like I'm and I'm on Instagram and I'm painting every single day, I'm at art shows, I'm doing these talks and it's like this is work. Right, but but people still don't understand that that, that art is a business. Mm -hmm. it, it can be a business, and so I think that you know it's incumbent upon artists to you know be unspoken to the fact that actually this is this is this is my career. I make money at this. I can I can teach. I can talk about it, and these sort of things. So it really is, you know, sort of like the, the hidden gem of the reality is that, that we are we, we we are and can be business people. You know, I think a lot of artists. Are like, learned over the, over the years too is that we're not very good business people. You know, I think that um, you know, a lot of us don't have corporations, we don't, we don't pay taxes, we don't know about you know, LLCs or all these things that, that, that normal small business, small business people, you know, do and should know. So I think that the good thing about cultural council and normal circuit arts is that we're kind of um, bridging that divide between, you know, no knowledge and knowledge and getting back to going forward. Yeah, totally agree. And I kind of would, bring in a little bit of that first question and this question um, because when I, I mean going through art school and they never teach you any of that either. So I fresh out of college and um, I started in the showroom as an assistant and I can't tell you how much potential I saw in the showroom and in the very beginning I mean if you, if anybody was here from five years ago and how the showroom looks today it's night and day different. Um, so when kind of talking about pre and post COVID um, and me kind of going up through being an assistant to now the executive director, I really wanted to rebrand the showroom and really incorporate not only being able to walk through an art fair, but also being able to enjoy exhibitions, panel discussions, artist lectures, um, giving the opportunity for young and established artists to come and view work from anyone from around the world um, to, you know, like uh, a full demonstration on how somebody does it and, and really connecting the community and an artist with consumers or, or designers or decorators or anybody who's just really interested in the arts. Um, that was one accomplishment that I'm, I'm really happy to be able to collaborate with Continuum, with Trina, with Anthony, um, with other artists that we've done before 
we've worked with our conservatory where they've really taught the importance of how to collect artwork, how to, how to preserve your artwork, how to store your artwork, um, anywhere from, you know, from, from conserving to the joy of just being in a, in a lecture and having somebody come up and, and really being excited, saying like, thank you so much for, for having these new exhibitions. When we first started the showroom, it was just, you know, you would walk around in an art fair, but now it's really a good and a bad thing. We have too many, too many events here that Paul and I do, but it's, it's the joy that we have and we love, we love our job, we love working and it's something that I've continued growing and, and being on stage with you. Um, I'm really inspired by everybody and I'm only in the beginning, so I'm, I'm really excited to kind of continue it. Yeah, and I, I think too that, that a lot of artists don't take advantage of the opportunities that, that, are, that are out there. You know, these, these seats could be filled, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of us, I mean, I get these, 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 these emails from the Cultural Council. Do I always read, do I always read them? No. When I do, I was like, oh man, I missed this, you know, this, art, this call to artists that I was like, you know, wanting to do, but I'm too, you know, self-absorbed doing something else. I, I'm, I'm missing the opportunities all the time. So, you know, I encourage anyone that, that's, that is an artist, that you're here, you know, encourage you, your 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 art other artists to come to these come to these um, these talks. You know, learn this stuff and like and, and just kind of to improve yourself. You know, so many artists. Are, it's like don't don't even have like you know like Instagram, right? Which is free advertising, right? Um, they don't they don't they don't utilize these things that that, that um, or don't have to or don't know how to use them or don't want to use them. I don't I don't I don't, I don't know what to do. They don't, they don't ask questions. So you know, it, it really is incumbent upon I guess the artists to be kind of more proactive than. I think that the, the common thread here would be, if I may, um, is that the opportunities are here. Uh, these these are people who mentor or answer questions or create programming that can create knowledge for you to move forward, and that breaks the stigma. So it all kind of ties into one perfect thing, but it takes involvement. You know, what, one thing I think as we talk about arts education, it's also important to, I think we zero in on childhood education a lot. I think it's also important for us to talk about lifelong learning opportunities. So, so what are the enrichment opportunities that we're allowing um, for us older adults <laughs> to to learn and grow through arts and culture? There's a lot of opportunities there. there is, so there is. Um, that's equally important. Yeah, you can catch one. You can catch one. Uh, you know, almost every single week there's something to go get your knowledge. So I invite you to do so. And if you're in a position to mentor, then be one because that's what will uh, help the younger kids. You know, see it as a viable option for a career. Uh, learn what they needed to learn or change their perspective to uh, maybe get them going down the process. Yeah, so so when, I, when I, I do a lot of work at the, at the stage of life with people that people are mental health and, and you know drug addiction, but I see them like, you know, a year later, like, I'm still, like, I'm still painting, I love it, right? But they, they, but they will come with the appetite that they can or they, or they won't, and it, it can change the perspective if you just like kind of put your hand out to someone that, that is willing, you know, it, it'll change, it could change someone's like, whole, their whole life. Kind of what we've all been yeah. saying, but the more questions you ask, the more answers, the more you start meeting other people and collaborating, and it's the best thing. It's just to kind of keep trying to learn, keep asking. That push is really makes a difference. Uh, I can move on. <laughs> Here's a juicy one. I love this one. The um, the current trend: NFTs or non-fungible token is a new digital identifier that cannot be copied, substituted, or subdivided, and is recorded in a blockchain that is used to certify authenticity and ownership. Do you feel that this has benefited the arts and entertainment industry, or has it made it more of a challenge for artists who have chosen not to approach the medium for their careers? Hmm. What do you mean? Okay. No, no. I just, I was, I just um, landed on you because you mean, can't I mean, do that. I, 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 I view NFTs, you know, as more as a, as a financial thing than, than anything. You know, I have an advisor, a financial advisor, who's like, he's like, don't buy crypto, right? So why why am I going to waste my time with an NFT? It's not going to be a, be a, a money maker for me in, in reality. Um, but as as a um, artistic venture, I think it's an amazing process that, that, that a lot of us, including myself, haven't really delved into that that deeply because you know we're fearful, we don't have the knowledge. You know, what's going on? I don't understand how to even like get. I, you know, I can't even get my own, the money that I have in, 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 in my little bit of equipment I have. I can't even get it out. I have no idea how to do it, right? So I think that there's a lot, a lot of fear based um, in, in that for me personally. But I think that there's definitely an opportunity for for artists there to um, explore 
you know, the possibilities of, of are, are probably endless, right? And ultimately, at the end of the day, it's gonna be it's gonna be something that is necessary, you know. But I'm the, I'm so I'm the kind of artist that I, I don't even sell prints, right? I so all my art is, is an original, you know, one of a kind thing. So I haven't even gone to the print level yet, let alone an NFT, which is a multiple, you know, a multiple, you know, of, of how, or however many there there is. So. You know, but uh, but definitely uh, uh, some people, uh, my, some of my artist friends have done very well. Sure. You know, in, in, in that space, and I think that the reality is is that once, but and, and I think too, it's it's a lot of um, it, it's 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 fearing the technology for for a lot of for myself. You know, that that that, that scares a lot of people. So um, definitely something that's worth looking into um, for me personally. I'm not there yet because I'm still focused on like the, 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 the paintbrush mm -hmm. and, and that sort of thing. But um, I know Evan for for, for sure is, is, is a little more in yeah. tune with that, that. Evan, you want to chime in on this uh, <laughs> this cutting edge technology? I think I'm down a bunch on my crypto, but uh, uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, long term, it is going to be not only here to stay, but it is proven to be a, a valuable outlet and resource. And obviously, uh, you know, nobody can argue that blockchain is a good thing for tracking and and all the purposes of why it was created. Um, short term, unfortunately, I think there was a little too much hype. And as anybody knows that's following the FTX collapse right now, mm -hmm. it was um, a little too shady. Uh, some of the hype and you know some of the pumping of the prices, uh, unfortunately. So I think long term, it would be something, but for one of the things I was telling artists, don't stop what you're doing to like dive into NFTs. That was just, you know, continue your practice and maybe dedicate an hour or two a night, a week, whatever, to brushing up on it, to learning about it. But also, it's not free to make NFTs. There's no. gas fees yes. and there's fees to publish them on these platforms. Sure. So um, I've only minted one, um, and I'm glad to have done it to support an artist that gifted the piece to me. That means a lot to me, uh, but I'm not currently putting um, any more energy into it at the moment. Anyone else want to chime in? I, <laughs> it's a rabbit hole. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, I would kind of chime in to also kind of mixing in both sides of it. The very beginning, it was all hype, and everybody, like the Ellie fad that happens, everyone is just full force, run to it. Um, it's really exciting. It really gives an opportunity for digital artists to showcase their work and really own their work. I think that was really important that um, is continuously you own your artwork um, but then again it some people just the bad eggs and kind of took over and it gave it a little bit too much of, of a bad name and um, I think it'll be I think it'll continue to be something I don't think that it should end all of arts in general you know they were like this is the future there's no more painting I'm, I did not believe that at all I thought that was kind of ridiculous when anybody said it but um I don't know. I mean, I mean, did you, like, I was thinking, like, sitting here, like, I couldn't see this this gallery space here was people with like politicians or whatever they would be. Right. It made no sense to me ever. You know. No, it's, it's a, a different. It's a different. It's a different thought process. It can coexist. Yeah. It can coexist, um, but I there's just nothing like having, feeling, seeing, enjoying the artwork. Yeah, experience yeah. and everything. I mean, that's a classic. That's an old school, or whatever you want to claim it. It's yeah. just the way art always was, and doesn't mean that things shouldn't shift, but I think that's what's gonna hold true is the, that's the baseline. All right, I think we can move on if you're okay with that, everyone, yeah? Uh, this one's specifically for you, Angelica. What has been your personal role in being a bridge between the art buying community and local artists, or, or non-local artists, depending on who's here? Um, that's a great question. Um, I think that it's kind of been a little bit of both, being able to uh, work with so many different galleries from around the world and being in Palm Beach County where it's such a hub for um, so many people that visit Palm Beach County. Uh, we have international to local and the fact that connecting buyers who are just starting out collecting and who didn't really know, you know how I should buy it, what should I spend to experience collectors and really working with them and going to their homes and seeing the amazing collections that they have um, and introducing them to new artists that they would have never seen had they just gone to Art Basel and, and gone to those you know very high 
high-end fairs. Um, since we work with, I mean, we're part of the Palm Beach Show group, um, and I've experienced all of their art fairs from jewelry to from Baltimore, New York, LA. Um, I've really gotten to know and, and learned about how the process of collecting is so different everywhere. Um, collecting in LA versus collecting in Palm Beach. Um, being able to know and, and kind of like bridge that gap um, has been really, really amazing and, and and just meeting so many amazing people, but there's still a lot to do and there's still a lot of, of collectors moving here and designers moving here and artists moving here and artists that are growing in their careers um, that I've seen since they first came to the showroom and they were eager to get a booth and maybe they're not ready yet to where they are now and it's incredible to see their journey. So it's kind of a little bit of, of just all of us going and learning together, being able to network network is, is our biggest, biggest um, asset here. The more people connections we do, the more connections we have, the more I can give the opportunity to connect with all of everybody who comes. That's mainly why we do our monthly exhibitions is um, for everyone, for all of our galleries, for all of our artists, for all of our collectors to come and personally meet them. Um, so that's been a huge push for us. Great. Um, Can you back on there real quick? I just, oh, like, I just um, is it so important for I think as, as an artist to be to to, to to support each other, right? And uh, it's just 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 it, in terms of like social media, like like forwarding or liking and following someone's post can change the the trajectory of that image, right? And, and, sharing, and, it. and, and sharing it and sharing it, and like I was able to during during because I just I have a house over here in Lake Worth, I was able to. Um, invite 13 different artists in my backyard during during like with those key paintings on the wall and have them in my backyard, right? And that to me was just just like have the have the um the attitude of of service instead of selfishness. I think it's so important for for us because a lot of times we're we're just worried about ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. But in, in the reality, when I have that, when I change that mindset to like help other people, you know, it's easier to help yourself at the end of the day. So I think that that really. I learned that from, from Trina, from, from just being you know, in, in some different um, areas of, of the community, is that, that the being of service to each other can change, you know, it's not gonna be, cause it's not, you're not always thinking about again to this, to, this, to this gallery, right? Or to or the Knox Gallery, or, or wherever it is that, 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 that that's a show mark these days. So you, we really have to make our own, our, our, our own spaces, right? So, um, so that's what I, I, I attempted to do for, for my own, you know, career and for people that, you know, that, that are supportive of me and who are like support, so. We're doing a lot of work um, thinking about what it means to be an emerging patron. Um, so there have been, um, we've started a series of tours that are specifically for people that might not know a lot about art um, with the curators of the exhibitions going through and learning terms, what is abstract expressions and those kinds of things. Um, we created a um, guide called Collecting Art in the Palm Beaches um, that was done through the Palm Beach Media Group. Um, we're gonna do a second edition of it this year. Um, very, very popular piece um, that shows, you know, everybody knows the for-profit galleries over on the island and all that stuff, right? But where are the places where you can buy stuff from local artists, right? Where are the non-traditional spaces? Where are the co-op galleries and the places to, to find work. So um, we've we've done that a lot. We've started a new um, event before our exhibition um, opened because people are there to have some wine, hug and kiss everybody and all of that, right? There, it, we, where are the collectors? Where are the people that are serious and want to talk to the artists and really get engaged with them and figure out why they did this and you know all that sort of stuff. Um, so we, we just did the first one in October. Very, very small. We invited um, the museum curators, um, you know, so people from the Norton and from the Boca Museum were there. Um, the artists were there, the curator was there. And then we targeted this list of some real collectors that not just, you know, collectors of, of you know, stuff from those island galleries, but people that we knew were collecting work from Palm Beach County artists too. Um, we sold a few things that night. Um, we're gonna continue to expand that. So there's a lot of that kind of work happening. The Cultural Council also, we did a uh, sector needs assessment this last year 
um, looking at what, what does everybody need? What do artists need from us? Not just from what do you need from the council, but where are you right now in your career and what do you need to move to that next step? And especially after COVID, where, where are things at? And the thing that we heard loud and clear from visual artists more than anything else was the ability to show and sell work, period. You know, and also connecting to those people that might be interested in buying work. Um, so that's really sort of shaping our thinking for programming in the next couple of years is what can we do to move that along? I want to see like a salon style um, show that's just up for like one weekend. As soon as a painting gets sold, another one goes up on the wall, you know, and they're, you know, they're just all over the place. Just come on in, come on in, buy something and get out so somebody else can buy one, you know. <laughs> um, so th those are the kinds of things that, that we're thinking about right now because it really is, you know, um, you're not going to survive on goodwill. <laughs> You've got to be able to sell your work. And so those of us, Evan's doing great work in creating these, these places where this can happen, right? We're trying to alter what we're doing too so that there's more opportunities for artists to just get their work up and, and then connect people that might be interested in buying it. It is a lot of networking. Um, I, I think that's an excellent point. So um, anything that any of us can do, we just need to do times 10 um, you know, to keep that moving. Um, I was only gonna say rising, tide, rising tides raise all ships. Yes. <laughs> right. Uh, next question would be, so uh, directed towards Evan and Scotty. Uh, since the pandemic, we've seen an uptick in affordable studios for local artists. Do you think this is a temporary phase due to the transition to real estate market or a permanent wave for the future? Let's start with, let, you're on the, you're on the sure. front lines. Um, so it, it really, we were, we were, I mean, we're all aware of COVID and we're all thankful that we're you know, moving in the right direction. Um, it was unfortunate that a lot of businesses did have to close, which did provide more empty space, but we started this initiative before COVID and before COVID, there was already 90 million square feet of vacant commercial real estate in this country alone. So, and one of the most beautiful things that this project and this initiative solves and addresses is we're not displacing or gentrifying anybody by taking a vacant retail storefront or even an, uh, an office building like in the Boca Raton Innovation Campus and repurposing it to be artist studios. Because um, there's oftentimes, we all know the way that this story unfortunately goes with the quote unquote Winwood effect where the artists come in to a industrial warehouse district area, an underserved area, they build it up. Collectors come in who often end up being developers and they unfortunately develop the area which you know just happened to Fountainhead and they just closed last week. Um, we do feel that there's so much more potential. I'm sure you guys all drive around and see vacant commercial real estate, retail spaces, ground floor retail on almost every new development. Uh, it's often not leased when the building goes up. It often sits vacant until the developer gets their ideal long-term perfect tenant. Why couldn't we have artists in there this is an opportunity I feel to make this point. Um, in the Hamptons, they enacted an ordinance that if a property sat vacant for more than six months, the property owner was fined if they didn't put art in the window. Mm. We're doing a little bit more than putting art in the window. We're putting artists in spaces to support the walkability of centers. So when somebody goes to that coffee shop or to, to a shopping center and they go to a coffee shop, hopefully as they make their way back to their car, they stop at the art studio, then maybe they stop at the boutique or the store next to that. Um, so I, I'd like to think that it's serving a good purpose. It's not just a temporary solution. We're starting to uh, enact partnerships with cities, municipalities, the Culture Council, uh, put us in touch with um, a few city commissioners we're very grateful for. And hopefully this can be a long-term permanent solution um, and trend and it's already inspired other initiatives and, and similar movements uh, in Miami with Build Vacancies with Miami Beach. Coral Gables has done something with Terra Nova on Miracle Mile. So we're glad to hopefully encourage and inspire others to find new ways to solve old problems because there's always going to be vacant commercial real estate and there's always going to be artists that need spaces to create and collaborate affordably outside their homes. We just happen to speak the language of the artist and the real estate developer um, and thankfully it's led to 27 spaces in three years. It, it, can, can I jump in real quick? For sure. Um, 
one of the things I tried to do, I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana originally, and that's where I was before here. One of the things we were trying to do in this very thing was um, through policy, anytime commercial real estate was created, it, they needed to white box it out if they didn't have it um, uh, leased. So that means that there was air conditioning, there was plumbing, there was a light, and, and then artists could come in and utilize those spaces, right? Because if it's if it's a raw building and they're just like, oh, we'll get to the first floor later, that's not helping any of us, right? So could we get to that point? I would love to see them at least white box that out and make sure that at least there's power and, and water and electricity and, and uh, uh, heating and cooling so that then we could utilize those spaces. And, and the great thing that happens when artists come in and do this is then the developers say, oh, okay, this space could be used for that or, or you know, other people are coming in and looking at that. Look, look at all this traffic that artists are bringing in and suddenly it goes away, right? So it can really help vacant buildings get filled up really quickly when they see it activated by artists and, and art. So going through policy changes to an accent of this, I think is a really smart way to do it. Um, it's harder to do, but if we can get it there, then, you know, it, it makes it more opportunities for artists and yeah, and I think for me as, as an artist, it was amazing because it, it just just to show that it actually works. That we when I was at the, the, the Bogus spaces, we, we moved like what, maybe three three times just because because the, the program worked. So this is a rented, and we moved on, and, and you know it it, it um it, it was it was you know, I was an artist. Well, I was to the roof. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but the, but the reality is is that and I think that is, is that again the artists need to be used to the space. Right, because a lot of times, you know, there were certain requirements that, that were for, for people to be there. You know, it wasn't a gallery space; it was a working artist studio. Co-op, yes. Co-op, so you had to be, so you had to be there. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that, um, you know, there's definitely a need for it. I think that there's, there's plenty of artists out there that that, that um, if, if they utilize it correct, like like not correctly, whatever, in their best best interest, you know, they can they can do amazing. You know, I had I was there and had you know great success because. I used the space. I invited people there. They were they were there. You know, when I wanted them to be there, it wasn't like just a, a, a picture hanging on the wall. It was like an, an active active space. Activated, active, activated. Mm -hmm. and, and and that and that was that was the thing is that you know I was there some some spaces I was there with maybe ten, ten artists. Maybe three of the artists there were actually um, utilizing it to, to the to the full potential. So that's what I was gonna. That goes back to your education points. All of our points. They got to it goes, it goes back to like create the, their own the, legacy. You, Exactly. I, I think more than anything, I've learned that um, you know, collectors buy the artist more than they buy the artist more than the art. Mm -hmm. Right? It was kind of amazing. I don't think but it's like I, I want I want people to buy me more than more so than they are because it's like you know, I, I mean, it, and they can only do that if you're there. If I'm there, <laughs> talking to them and, and, and engaging with them, you know, I, I would like to see the, these spaces, um, empty spaces, be more not so much working our studios, but more like pop-up shows for the artists, so they're looking for that kind of idea to, to do it that way because, like, again, artists are always looking to, I don't know, I have a stack of paintings, we have stacks of paintings. What am I gonna do with them? It's like, I need to, need to show them somewhere. So if it's like, you know, if I can rent a space, you know, cheaply for a month somewhere, do my own pop-up show somewhere, getting it out, I can make, who knows what that looks like. Or a salon. Or a salon. I, I, did, I, I was fortunate to have some nice people in Brooklyn that we can use their house sometime for a salon, a salon to pop up in their, in their house. It was amazing. It was amazing. And they, 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 they I put my art to their house. I put my stuff everywhere. So people came through, all their friends, and, and, they, and they walked out with, uh, you know, a lot of cash, which is, what, which is great. I have one caveat. Um, sometimes when situations like this come up, you'll hear people say, you know, write your senator, write your city commissioner, whatever. In this instance, the majority of our properties are actually come by city commissioners and community redevelopment agencies, otherwise known as CRAs, encouraging their property owners and their, their developers to do this to for the betterment of the of the community, of the shopping center at large, and the artists at large, so on and so forth. Um, when we we actually don't reach out to property owners to ask them for space. The few times that I did early on, no response. But when the mayor or city commissioner or whoever or you know the Cultural Council says, hey, this is a good idea, you should do this. We don't charge them anything. We assume all the liability for the water, the electric, the utilities, the insurance. Uh, we do the build out, we do the marketing, we do the public relations, we do the leasing, we serve as one point of contact for the artists. 
and it's fully transparent at the point that the property does eventually get leased, the notice do get uh, the artists do get a notice to vacate. Uh, some of these spaces in Palm Beach Gardens, they've been there over two years. Some of the spaces, um, you. you know, they might only be there for a couple months, but it's still an opportunity of a lifetime. We had artists painting on Las Olas. It's eighty-six dollars a square foot. It would be thirty thousand dollars just for the rent to rent this space, and we had artists in there with the opportunity that they'll unfortunately probably never get a chance to have again. And that came from us having a relationship with the mayor of Fort Lauderdale and him encouraging the owner of Las Olas to do this when they were recently struggling at the beginning of um, 2019. And we just saw him last week. He goes, I'm full right now in Las Olas and I really wanna thank you guys for what you did. We, had, we ended up getting a space lease on Las Olas, the uh, former Levinson jeweler space that was vacant for five years. And a guy come in, uh, both spaces we had in Las Olas, somebody came in, they said, I like the buzz and the energy in this space. I want to lease this space. And, and that was how we actually ended up uh, proving the concept. And, and now it's where it is. So in this instance, reaching out to a city commissioner or whoever could actually uh, help move the needle forward. Yeah, politics play a part. And that, that would go back to, if you're concerned about arts education for the youngsters, then got to elect people where that's part of their platform for sure yeah. um, let's move on what role do you personally play when it comes to diversity equity and inclusion in the arts mm. Scott. Really? Scott? I, mean, I, that, I took every box <laughs> <laughs> gay black artist drug addict <laughs> <laughs> You know, like I said, I, I, I think that it's important. I, I do what I do in terms of like working in the community, my community that I've had in case of way, drug and alcohol related. You know, I'm so, so in recovery. That is that is my focus, right? Um, in terms of, I would say, as far as race relations or, or as, as, and diversity, you know, that to me has been, you know, just by being present, you know, letting people know that that as an art, that I am an artist, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an African American, you know, I, I'm at these shows, I, I'm supported by, you know, Trina, um, Trina and Anthony, who are, are like, you know, huge mentors to so many artists in, in the community, you know, posting uh, other people's, supporting other artists, you know, I, I think that I, I, I did, a, I, I reposted one of my friend Chica's um, artist, uh, art things, it was like, it had like more views than he, the my, the one, the my <laughs> But so the, the reality is, is just that, you know, supporting each other, yeah. you know, that, that has been the key for me is supporting each other. I'm not out there like, you know, marching up and down the street, that sort of thing. But I, I definitely think that it's, it's important for me as an artist to support. Um, I, I, I don't, but see the thing is, I don't want to be known as a black artist. I want to be known as an artist. I don't want to be yeah. a gay artist. I want to be an artist. I want to be an American painter. Uh, uh, that sort of thing. I don't want to, so I don't want, I, I, I'm kind of against these pigeonholes that, that we put ourselves into, because when that happens, I, I'm, I don't want to be a local artist. You know, I want to be, a, I don't, I want, you know, I would love to be on your cover of your local magazine. You know what I mean? But I want to be, I don't want to be the Palm Beach guy. I want to be an American painter, right? So I think it's, it's incumbent on, on someone like us uh, to, to think bigger than the, the box that, that, that society may, may put us in, right? Because if that's the case, I'm gonna be um, a Lake Worth artist for the rest of my life. That's not what I want, you know? <laughs> who, who wants that? You know, I love Lake Worth, right? But I, will, I, will, and I, and I think that, you know, one of the, one of the, I was so inspired by Continuum is because, you know, from my understanding, the, the, the purpose of, of the show came about because, you, you, because, the, because the local artists weren't getting their due, right? There's gonna be art Palm Beaches or wherever they were on Basel, and you guys were getting recognized, you know, back in nine years ago when I was still doing my thing, right? But at that point, it's, it's like it's like how do how do how do you guys change the structure of your own life by, by being present in the community, being a black artist, being a gay artist, being a, a woman artist, whatever it is. It's like we need to be out there. So I think that more than anything, it, it's uh, it's just being being present, being um, successful, being um, respectful. You know, and not look like a crazy person. You know, and which I can do. <laughs> you know, and, and have done. It, you know, but it, but it, but again, it's like, and I said, like, like, like again, being of service to everyone. You know, without boundaries. That, that's my kind of attitude. That's for sure. So I really believe that 
um, if change is going to happen, um, it needs to start at the top, right? Um, and so that's why the Cultural Council, you, I think of us either as the, the umbrella or the roots, right? And you can look at it either way. But it's got to start with us. If the sector is going to make these changes, we need to say to the sector, it's important for this to happen. Mm -hmm. It's important for these opportunities to be created. And it's not just having a um, concert during Black History Month. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. exactly. That is not going to do it. <laughs> we need to make sure that, you know, you're Black 365. I'm gay 365, right? I mean, come on, let's let's yeah. be honest about this. So what are we doing as people in positions of power, whatever that means, what are we doing to either enable or hold back right. these things from happening? If I don't acknowledge at some point that I'm a gatekeeper to some of this, um, then we're not gonna break through. Mm. So what are the systems that I can break down to make sure that we are allowing access and opportunity for absolutely everybody. And that's really, really critical. So when, when we talk about equity and inclusion, we have to think about um, do our boards look like and represent the people that we serve? Do our staffs look like and represent the people that we serve? Does our programming reflect the people that we serve? Um, it's all of these things. Do the policies and procedures that we put in place allow this to happen? I spent um, in Indianapolis about six years totally revamping the grant program because we looked at an inequity where six organizations, all white European uh, based organizations were getting more than 70% of the entire mm -hmm. allocation of funding. And once we looked at that and said, what is going on here? What we did was we took money from those six and gave it to everybody else. That's why I have gray hair. That's why I'm no longer in Indianapolis. <laughs> it about killed me. But it was important to do um, because we were gatekeeping. And I think that that I, 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 I don't want to sound like I'm on a, a soapbox here, but I just think that um, there is so much destruction that can happen even if people think they're doing things that, you know, that they're helping, mm -hmm. you know? So it's a constant reevaluation re of um, where am I at? Who is this helping or hurting and listening? I think you said that earlier, you know, just making sure that we are making those connections and listening to see how we can best help, um, you know, tear things down and build it back up so that everybody has an opportunity and chance to get it. And, and, and don't be discouraged, like I, I, I applied for the, um, one of those uh, grants at the Cultural Council and was, and was rejected, right? And, but it didn't stop me from doing what I wanted to do. Right, I, what, my, my goal was to, you know, kind of do some TV kind of sculptural work, and uh, that was my application. I was rejected, but I did it anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Not because I'm mean, I, I, I'm a black guy being rejected because I was like, no, no, I, I probably didn't do it properly, or whatever. Who knows? Whatever. I, I didn't didn't take my time when I did it, but for whatever reason, it's like I I, I couldn't let that that vision stop me from doing what I wanted to do, right? So, so what? So whatever. Um, you know, boundaries that, that I quote unquote may have, you know, I need to, you know, take it upon myself to like say, yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna do it anyway, all right? Because a lot of times I, we, get re, we get rejected as artists for whatever reason, and that, and that, that bores us, right? Instead of inspires us. So, you know, it, it really is important for, you know, as an artist to, to have a microphone and to, to remind myself and people that are around me that, 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 you know, that don't worry about it. You know, I, I'm a big fan of the, of the saying of so, so what now, what? right? So what now? What? I mean, we didn't get, I didn't get into the continuum. I didn't get into, you know, whatever, zero key spaces, whatever it is, right? But so what now, what am I gonna do about it, right? Because because we have such an opportunity, you know, with a, a, a our problem with Instagram, this, 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 this free social media platforms that are out there for us to, 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 to utilize, but we, but we, don't, we don't do them. We don't open the emails from the Cultural Council. You know, we don't, we don't, we, we don't, we think that spending $2 a, a square foot, you know, at, at, at a space is, is not going to have value to us, but I'll spend, you know, $8 a day on coffee. You engage with your emergency patients. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, it's, it's, yeah, so it's, 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 you know, I need, I need to make a decision for myself. It's like, what's important to me? You know, am I going to, am I going to invest in my, you know, I'm spending a lot of money for this, this, this show in, in Miami this whole week. But it's an investment in myself, in my career, 
And you know, and, my, and I told my friend over here, it's like, I would always ask you, do you sell anything that day? Maybe it's like, maybe, maybe not. Okay. But, but, but I'm gonna sell something like in, in three weeks later, you know, so, or, or a month later or whatever it is. So it's an investment in, in, my, in myself that, that a lot of artists are, refuse to, or are scared to, to um, you know, to do because it's, you know, it may not work, right? That, 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 that's, I mean, that, that's not how we, we need to think, you know? And, and as, as sometimes as, you know, in the diversity crowd, it's like we've been put down so many times, it's like, it's like, no, I, I can't think that way, right? This is, this is, this is, this is our time, you know, and, 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 and to use the, the, these opportunities that are out there, I, I need to jump on them. That's well, a nice thing that just doesn't get mentioned enough is that um, there's the one side where there is institutional things that are occurring, either on purpose or not on purpose, that are keeping things from happening and gatekeepers. There's also personal responsibility of the artist, regardless of what the, the situation is, that they can still trudge forward. Yeah, sure. Uh, we were, of course, we want stuff out of the way, of but yeah. I was, I was, you I won't was, be able to take advantage of that new path if you're not moving. Yeah, I was, I was trying to, I was going to come to try to come to the beach, right? And you know that didn't work out. I blocked you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but for whatever reason, but, but, but I still, but I, have a, I got a backyard. I got, a, I got a paintbrush. I got, so I can still move forward. So it's not going to stop me. Because, you know, because whatever reason, you, you can't think that way. And I kind of want to chime in on that, too, because I feel like I have a personal responsibility um, as, as somebody who, who, run the, who runs the showroom from seeing it in the very beginning where it was just the gallery spaces and you'd walk in and there was nothing. And it was, you know, kind of adjusting it and rebranding it and, and creating all of these new programs and exhibitions. Um, I felt the personal responsibility to really inclusive the inclusivity of everything, of everyone, of, of different, um, we've had different themed exhibitions to collaborating with different organizations like Continuum. Uh, we did Caribou, we've done um, uh, Hispanic Month. We've done, we've tried to do as much as we can for just being, you know, it's just us two and, and being able to, we don't have like a full team behind us um, as much as, as, you know, other organizations have it. But it's really we want to create a family and have different organizations or different people or, or, or companies or even artists um, really come to us and say, we have this idea, what do you think? And we might not be able to do it this season, but we can always do it next season. Um, being able to network and collaborate as much as we can is our biggest, biggest, biggest thing. Um, because with, there's only a certain amount of exhibitions, but we always try and, and try to maybe like if we can't do you can just hold you as uh, one of our designer lounge pieces and we'll include you as a guest artist in our exhibition um and in, in some cases we tell artists you know if you can't afford one booth get get different artists and you can create a full gallery together um that way you can create the space and collaborate and and come and do lectures and everything but um being able to collaborate with different organizations for the exhibitions has been a huge help and push for us. Networking. Yeah. You know, I, one more thing that I'd like to say, I, I think that um, work in equity and inclusion is not something you can say, okay, I'm gonna work on this for an hour, right? right? It is everything all the time. I was on, uh, last couple of years, I, I was on a visual art panel for uh, the Division of Arts and Culture that reviewing grants for the state. Um, specifically about visual art organizations. And so I'd read the application and they talk about all their exhibitions and how many black artists or how many Hispanic artists they had in the shows and all of that. And, and my question to them was always, who decided the artists that were in the show? Who's making those decisions, mm -hmm. right? So it's not just that we're showing the work, we also have to make sure that the people that are making those decisions are representative of, of the yeah. people too. So again, it, it, you, you, in, in my uh, opinion, you've got to look at all sides of, of the equation and, and make sure that that, that is um, top of mind at all times. That's not something we can just say, as I said, you know, we'll, okay, I'll work on equity and inclusion now for an hour and then I'll go back to doing what I'm doing. To your original point, the top, the museums are run by, they're curated by, the, that whole thing, you know, the sort of leaving women out of museums for forever and ever and still <laughs> in many places. I just, my diversity and inclusion piece is not the, I'm gonna mention the traditional answer, but I 
Well, I, first off, I fortunately grew up in uh, Broward County, very culturally diverse place. I went to school, I was 90% African American, but I don't look at color. I grew up with Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Jamaican, Haitians, and everybody else in between. Um, so, and I partner with a, a Trinidadian American. Uh, so we don't, we don't consider color. What we consider in the case of Zero Empty Space is the artists that come into the program. But the point that I wanted to make for the purpose of this question is, we're, we pride ourselves on inclusivity for the artists that we accept uh, into Zero Empty Spaces. Not just, and I don't know, are any of you guys familiar with Bakehouse in Miami and the Fountainhead and the traditional residencies mm -hmm. in Miami? Yeah. All right. You generally have to have an MFA. You generally have to have a long CV. You generally have to be, let's just call it like it is, one of the cool kids in Miami, which the door is not exactly open for everybody, uh, to get one of those coveted opportunities. Our opportunity, while thankfully it, it is coveted and is proven to be beneficial, we want to afford that same opportunity to an emerging artist to be in a space next to and working alongside an established or mid-career artist on a level playing field so they both could have an opportunity to be discovered, to be collected, to be supported, to be in a collaborative type of environment. And I'm so glad that you guys have had the opportunity uh, to create in the Palm Beach Gardens location. Um, so I would hope with that answer, maybe people start taking a different view on inclusivity in terms of not everybody's gonna have an MFA. Not everybody's gonna have the opportunity to be part of the Cool Kids Club, but they might still be just as deserving uh, as those other artists. And hopefully, I've unfortunately seen a lot of artists get deterred because, oh, I didn't get accepted in the Bakehouse. There's people that have been waiting 20 years to get sure. to the Bakehouse. There's only so many spaces. That's a great point. So that's, that was my- I think that doesn't get added on enough is that the, the power of an emerging artist being under the same roof or at least in the same collective as someone who's established is uh, just amazing for the artist. You guys mentioned the, art, the galleries on the island and um, the differentiation between a local artist and an American artist. I look at this piece here, it's $350,000. This person died 40 years ago. God bless him, I don't know who it is, you know, whatever the case may be. But Scotty, very deserving artist. If anybody's ever seen his work, mm -hmm. pours his heart and soul into it, very genuine, very authentic. Uh -huh. He's been painting for a very long time. He works on his craft, he studies. He should be, able to be on one of those galleries on the island, but just because he's been considered a local artist, that shouldn't be to his detriment. You know, that should almost actually be to your benefit and to your favor. And I appreciate you guys wanting to be inclusive and, and, and factoring in inclusivity and giving the opportunity to artists so they could go from local to American artists to international and beyond. It really could change artists' lives and change communities. Yeah. Marketing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to kind of uh, touch on that too because Leon Kelly, he's an American or surrealist. No, this is no, 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 no. Uh, He's amazing. But then you get to view this work and then walk around the entire gallery and you get to see so many amazing artists from local to across the seas to around the country from established to I, you know, I've been creating art for the last few years and I really want to sh have a place to show showcase. Um, and we don't. We love to kind of create the showroom and have it at a stand, but we don't, we want to include as many people as we can and, and as many artists and as many styles and new upcoming styles. Um, so the great thing about the showroom too is you walk around and you can see the full spectrum of everything and different mediums. Um, and I love that the more galleries, I mean, we've had blue chip, we have blue chip galleries here and local artists who are just starting out. and. To be able to have the collectors from the blue chip really walk around, that's one of my favorite parts, um, is giving the tour to communities and to organizations and, and to just collectors who just wanna learn a little bit about everything. Um, it, that's great. Yeah. Um, let's move on. We're about halfway through these questions, just, just so you guys know. There's a lot of interesting stuff coming up here. Um, how does the institution you work for, even if it's yourself, Scotty, for example, uh, support local artists of all disciplines in the community? And we kind of just touched on that a little bit. So this this continues. Is, is there anything else that you're working on or you're excited about <clears throat> that supports local arts and uh, of all disciplines? I know you mentioned that, Dave. And we appreciate that, poets, poets and everyone being um, gathered together into the creative field. Um, 
Any other work you're, you're doing that you want to mention right now? Because this does really tie back into a lot of things you guys just mentioned that you're already doing for yourselves or for where you work, the institution you work. Uh, so we have our monthly exhibitions. Um, our next one coming up is the second Thursday of December. We're doing art and design exhibitions. Um, and one of our featured exhibitors is all the way from Peru. And he actually is right here. So his booth is incredible and he wanted, he did it just like you said, um, he went to a home, a friend's home. He shipped everything over, popped up a couple pieces. I was invited, absolutely loved him. We walked around the space. We decided, you know, he should have a space here. Um, and to be able to kind of include him and his amazing work, he's an architect, designer, sculptor. Um, we've included him in the art design and really started to highlight him as an international gallery artist. And he's gonna be coming in and, and being one of our most featured um, artists in the exhibition. But then we have our installation exhibition, which we've kind of collaborated with Continuum as well and, and found different artists through the show. And so every month, um, it's just, we want to highlight specific artists and the exhibitions. We have our women's exhibition coming up in March. Um, so being able to highlight specific, not only in the showroom, but monthly and, and feature, you know, Carlos who would never have a voice in Florida wouldn't be able to showcase um, in one of our busiest months. So we're really excited for that. I've got a, a workshop coming up on December 1st for artists, um, how to write uh, proposals. Um, so it's a grant writing workshop specifically for artists. So if you're interested, I believe it's at 10.30 uh, on December 1st um, at the Cultural Council. Um, and uh, I'm actually leading the workshop. So um, if you're sick of hearing me, you don't want to come on December 1st. <laughs> Let's circle back. That's, only... That's the one I'm looking for. I'm sorry, the cultural only, council in general, you just gotta know that you gotta get on the newsletter oh, because yeah. the amount, oh, amount of information. My question is only it's only for Palm Beach artists, though, correct? Uh, well, the workshop you can you can attend. That's that's fine. We we support Palm Beach County artists through our grant programs and all that. But if you'd like to attend, you certainly even if you're not a resident of Palm Beach. Certainly. Uh, yeah, go ahead. We're we're. Uh, <coughs> Launching a partnership with a new art technology app called Artmatcher. It actually has, uh, if any of you guys are familiar with the dating style swiping apps, but it has that for artwork and artists. And you're actually going to swipe the art that you like, and it's going to pick up on your interest. And they're integrating a lot of really cool new technology, <coughs> NFC tags for galleries, public art, murals as well. Um, that, that they're glad to, and, and Thankfully, the founder was a successful uh, energy industry uh, executive that exited his company. He sits on the board of the PAM, and he just loves arts, and he's actually not charging the artist or the gallerist uh, to participate on this app. So we're gonna be rolling it out uh, during Fort Lauderdale Art and Design Week and, and extending it to all of our Zero Spaces artists and beyond, uh, other artists as well that wanna participate. Uh, so we'll be putting out some more information. It's called Art Matcher. And one of the things that we pride ourselves on with Fort Lauderdale Art and Design Week is it's a self-guided discovery tour of the arts. We don't charge anybody to participate. Uh, you can submit an event. We'll list it on our calendar. We'll list it on our social media posts. We'll list it in our you know press releases and so on and so forth on the website. Um, and it's really aimed to get people engaging in the arts daily for one week, utilizing hashtag you know, supporting a movement, uh, all the people, once again, 365, all the people that we know and love and support throughout the year uh, in Broward County, like the Frank Pembroke Pines, the Miramar Art Culture Center, the Coral Springs Museum of the Arts, these, you know, well-deserving institutions, unfortunately, don't often get the love and support that they deserve. So we think, as we've seen, be very evident with the growth and success of Miami Art Week, Art Basel and Art Weeks throughout the world, if we can get people together to support the arts and really come together for at least one week, hopefully that can have um, you know an impact throughout the rest of the year. Three, three You're answering. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just saying, just for me, if you want free passes to the spectrum, like I wanted. Hey! VIP pass from uh, Thursday night through uh, the 30th through the 4th. So 
Please he started know. to answer my next question, so I know where you stand. Mm -hmm. um, has technology and social media watered down the value of art or brought value to it? So Art Matcher would be a great example of it. You mentioned Instagram as another example. Oh, I, I, I think social media is going to be the way. Because, it really impacts. Because, because it is, I mean, like a, lot of, like a lot of people are saying, you know, I don't have an MFA from Yale, I don't have, I don't, I'm not in big galleries, I'm not represented, so I, I represent myself, right? So social media, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, whatever it is that, 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 you, that we can use, I, I use, right? And, you know, hopefully, you know, sooner or later, sooner or later you know, the match will happen and some, you know, zillionaire will come by all my stuff and I'll use art, right? But until then, yeah, I, I gotta hustle. And I think that, that the social media space is an amazing thing. And, it's, and just like even it's like over the past couple, two, couple, three months, you know, just because I was active in my Instagram, Instagram actually pays me now for, for, for my, for my, my, um, my reels. It's crazy, right? Um, not because I asked them to do it, they just, they just, they just, it just started, it, was, it evolved that way. And, you know, and it, and it, and it's, it has a lot to do with a lot of um, shameless self-promotion. <laughs> I, 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 I stop worrying about what people are like, oh my God, he's posting again, who cares? Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I used to I used to look at people, you know, right? But it, it's like, but I used to be kind of self-conscious about it, but you know, at some point I, I had to like let that go and, and kind of use it as the best way that I can. And all of a sudden I'm getting checks from Instagram, you know, and, and it's great. Um, but it's, it really is, again, it has to do with um, letting, letting go of the fear of, of, of the technology and that sort of thing, and, you know, and letting, letting um, and asking questions, right? Because a lot of people, a lot of the jokey space stars that, that I was with, you know, I'm 55, but a lot of them are in their 60s and 70s, they, they don't know anything about Instagram, right? But some, some are willing to ask, some are like, I can't do that, right? So, all right, don't do it, we can go, you know? Or ask for help. Or ask for help, yeah. right? And it's a recurring theme right here. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's been a great platform. Um, I mean, you, some can say that it's overwashed and just too much, but I mean, you can say that for any any platform. But it's I love I love the fact that because you know we represent so many different galleries and artists, and we have so many of our followers that we love to tag. Tag, tag, tag. So in order for us to tag somebody and they don't have an Instagram, um, but we, you know, some of our galleries say the same thing. They don't know how to, or technology. I don't want to be on my phone all the time, but just schedule your time. You don't have to be on your phone all the time. You can just schedule it an hour, uh, you know, Mondays for an hour or two and have it fully scheduled for the week. Um, but I think it's a huge, huge aspect to it because internet connects worldwide. So people can come into town from across the seas, can start following us and then, you know, see an artwork that we posted and tag it and so on and so on. So I think it's a huge factor. It might not be for everybody. Um, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But I think it's, it's personally a great tool. The Jim to Spaces was amazing with that because it, like, if, if you were a part one of the artists, if you just tag them, they'll I mean, they go, mm -hmm. go, we post it. It's like, it wasn't rocket science. Remember, like, when you had to, <laughs> remember when you had to hang something on someone's doorknob to get the word out? Yeah. 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 This is a beautiful place. Yeah. Just, just Dave, you were going to say? Yeah. So I, I think that um, a little tough love for artists in, in this regard, and that is technology's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. And if you're going to be serious about this, right, then the excuse, I don't know how to use whatever, I don't know how to upload my photos, I don't know how to do this, is not gonna cut it anymore. You know, because it's here, technology's here to stay. So I always tell artists, okay, if you're gonna go, you make a go at this. If you're gonna be serious about this and really do it, then you're gonna have to put the big girl pants on and, and learn how to, you know, how to do these things. Um, some systems are easier to use. You know, I, one of the things that I always say in, in grant workshops is don't wait to the last minute to, to try to learn the technology, you know, when the grant is due. Um, it, so I, it, the more that, that you can embrace it and figure it out and not be afraid of it, um, the better it's going to help you in, in, in the long run in your career. And listen, it doesn't want to bring kind of being with lips. I remember, I, for some reason, I wanted to be in Boca Magazine, right? The little book. I would always tag Boca 
magazine, hashtag book magazine, all the time. They don't, they don't know, know who I was, right? I'm just tagging to every single post, right? Because I, I whatever, right? Stalk. Kept it, stalk it, yeah, whatever. I was like, it's a but at the end of the day, they invited me to, to be at some like, mm -hmm. event at the Delhi something, the Delhi Marketplace, because they knew who I was, mm -hmm. right? And, they, and it just was like, they're like, oh, by the way, you want to come to this thing? I was like, sure. <laughs> Where you been, right? But it's like, but it was like the posting, tagging, have, have like a plan of attack, you know, whatever that may be. Maybe if that was right or wrong, who knows? But it worked, right? For that for that little for that period of time, um, and. It, I've got a uh, slippery slope here. Um, and this has been covered um, and talked about a good bit in circles that I, I run in. City and county have always embraced regional, national, and international artists. And this is generalizing. In the community, examples are murals, galleries, like we've talked about, and projects, big projects, usually public art projects, if I may paraphrase this. <clears throat> what will the local artist roles be for Palm Beach County in 2023? Like, what, what could we suppose? I'm going to start to add my thoughts to this a little bit. What could we suppose that we could do to kind of change this, um, the trajectory of this? There's nothing wrong with regional and international artists obviously coming here and getting projects because I'd like to get a project in Atlanta and I don't want the door shut on me. But um, where should the needle be pointing first has always been the, the big issue um, with a lot of local artists being like, man, I can't even compete. Or it seems like, and it may just be perception, but I don't think so. It seems like a lot of regional and international are kind of just kicking through the door with their uh, prowess because they're the cool kids, to use your phrase, mm -hmm. and just scooping these projects, no problem. And then there's an equally qualified person just sitting in our backyard. So um, a little bit of reflection on that, where it's been um, and where it could go as we move forward through this year. Anyone want to pick that up? I'll start. Um, so I think that a healthy cultural sector, a healthy city in terms of showing and exhibiting art needs to be a mix of all of it. There needs to be local, there needs to be regional, there needs to be statewide, there needs to be international. We need all of it, right? Um, I think that I sit on a lot of grant panels reviewing um, a lot of proposals. I sit on the county's uh, Art and Public Places Committee. Um, you know, I, I, I don't score, but I'm in, uh, in the room for all of our Artist Innovation Fellowship reviews and all of that. I have to say that the people that are getting commissions and opportunities are the ones that, you know, not only is their art great, but boy, can they tell a good story and put a good proposal together, you know? And a lot of it comes down to, I'll be really honest about sub submitting materials. I'm giving away all my good material for my workshop. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that. Oh, no. Hold on, slow down, slow down. Now you don't have to go with the two um, I call it the kitchen sink mentality. And that is, you want these panelists, you're, you're sitting there with your proposal, right? And you're like, I just want them to know how talented I am and how great I am, so what do you do? You put absolutely everything into that proposal. You put your poetry in there. You put your, you know, sculpture. You put your 2D work and all of that. And so what? what's the result as a panelist? As I'm sitting there looking at this, I say, this person is an unfocused mess. I don't know who they are or what they're trying to do, right? So part of this, this is not the, the total solution, right? But part of this is about writing and presenting yourself really well. Because not everybody's gonna get an hour or two to sit and listen to how charming Scotty is, right? That has to happen through a grant application. So you've gotta really make sure that you are presenting yourself the absolute best, most professional way that you can uh, in order to compete with those people because I guarantee you that those people that are getting international commissions are doing that, right? I think that and not everybody's a public artist, right? So if you're interested in learning that skill, you know, hit up this guy, you know, start following him, work, you know, see if you can apprentice with somebody, learn the skills and the opportunities, um, you know, to, to think big, to paint at a height, to do those types of things. Um, so I, I, I think for me, I think it's about what you're submitting, but I think it's also then what skill don't I have, and how can I get that, and how can I, 
you know, hone that to get better so that then I do have those opportunities. I want nothing more than all of our Palm Beach County artists to get those commissions in Atlanta and Chicago and everywhere else. I want to see all your artwork in the other airports, yeah. right? I want to see that happen. And I wanted to say from Palm Beach County, Florida, right? Um, but that's not going to happen without that skill set and without presenting yourself professionally in order, in order to do that. I think that the, what you was here, uh, the Social Council, Jessica, talked to us last week about how artists should be, um, we should be doing call to artists other places, right? Mm -hmm. We should be doing the call to artists in Kansas or Missouri or whatever. So even small piece, whatever, small pieces of work that we can ship to them. So mm -hmm. our art is kind of out there more than just around here. Which okay. was, was, was brilliant, right? Because I didn't put that like, you know, I can go find it. I'm more like, you know, that, that whatever, that, that email with all the call to artists. It's like, oh, Kansas, delete, right? But that's why, but why not? But why not? And, and if I kind of expand my reach, people are going to know me, oh, oh, this is Scott, he's a, he's a, he's a he's from Kansas, why not? But it, it just makes sense. So it, it really is, again, just like kind of listening to what people are, are, are telling us to do and actually doing it. Right, because I, I can hear all these things all the time. Oh, that's a good idea. Put it to the side, right? Instead of like, oh, you know, what's a good idea? I actually do it, <laughs> and that and that really has, has been no problem for for, for me, especially me included. Uh, that you know, we have all these things that that are possible, but we I refuse to fear whatever lack of funds, whatever it is. You know, lack of not funds, priorities. My priority is this over this, and, and the reality is, is that you know I could probably um, make something happen. By a little bit of effort that you know that otherwise I wouldn't have done. You know, here's a question for all of you that are artists. How many of you have been rejected for a call or didn't get the commission or whatever? How many of you have called the person or called the organization that offered that and said, Why, you know, can you help me understand why my work wasn't selected or what I can do better next time? Have any of you done that? Well, I applied for the fellowship. The year that Anthony got it, and I went to the workshop, and I made sure I was going to apply for it again the next year, and I went to your workshop, and everything you said helped me to narrow my application. So when I got it this year, <laughs> I had gone to the workshop. I mean, we have to, you have to go, and 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 like you were saying. A rejection, that's a part of it. Mm -hmm. That's a part, I re, you know, that's a part of it. Are you guys noticing a theme? This, yeah. The theme of this is the artist has to take responsibility for their own trajectory. Whether we're talking about inclusion yeah. or rejection or international versus me or whatever the heck it is, it's all, it all goes back to whether or not we can, you know, move forward. There's team. nothing wrong with, with saying to uh, the grant organization or whatever, it, there's nothing wrong with you calling after you get that rejection letter and saying, gosh, how can I make this stronger next time? Where did I miss the mark? That is their job to help you understand that. And that's only going to make you better if you take that opportunity and take that responsibility to, to figure that out. I didn't know you could. That is, that is not the first time I've heard that. No, I didn't know it either, but I've done it. Well, I didn't know because, as a matter of fact, I applied for a show at the county at uh, the uh, Palm Beach Cultural Council, and I got rejected. And, I mean, I thought my piece was strong. I thought that I did everything right. But I, in the back of my mind, it's like, gosh, I wish I could call them to ask, why was it not accepted? What could I have done differently? And so now I will. <laughs> right. Now I, I, I will. I think it's um, it depends on the organization, mm -hmm. right? And it depends on on what it is. For grant programs and and that type of thing, for our artist innovation fellowship program of which Anthony and Kianga are both recipients of this, um, you do have the opportunity afterwards, you know, to say. And not call it like, you didn't give this to me, I don't know. But rather, how can I make my proposal stronger next time? With exhibitions, it, it, it gets a little trickier, right? Because that comes down to curatorial decisions and what works well with the others. But what I tell, and what I said to Scott, because we talked about this at, at the opening the other night, he said, well, I didn't get it the second time either. I said, are you going to apply again? That's the first question I asked him. Yeah. 
is if you don't dust yourself up, yeah. stand up, and apply again. Mm -hmm. You did it, and look what happened, yeah. you know? And um, I actually was happy because I found out some other artists that had also applied and said, oh, don't let them get down because she applied. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, there's a lot of artists applying to these things. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Who's, who's applied for the consortium 50 times? I mean, oh, wow. yeah. it feels like 50. So you're saying that the exhibition and the grant writing is two different things? So are you saying that, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They, they are. The, I don't know how um, uh, receptive curators would be to you know yeah. those kind of calls. But yeah. if you're applying for a grant or a fellowship okay. or something like okay. that, you absolutely yeah. can follow up with okay. them afterwards and say, how can I strengthen this for next time? Yeah, okay, okay. Let me, co let me comment on that too, because one of the things that I try to get artists to understand when they're applying for these things is a lot of times they provide a checklist mm -hmm. that you go through the entire checklist. Right. Sometimes you gotta create your own checklist to make sure that you have everything that they ask for. Because I'm going to tell you, a lot of times the number one reason could be you just didn't follow the directions of the call, whatever the call is. It could be that one thing that you missed. If you have a checklist, you make sure that everything is there. And I help Anthony with a lot of his grants and fellowships. And we go through a checklist. I go through it. He goes through it again. So don't just take it upon yourself. Have somebody else with you to go over and make sure that everything is there. Because you can miss one piece of paper that can make the difference. So, but I always say follow the directions of that call. Don't give anything more than that what they ask, right. but make sure you give them everything they ask. Right. So. You know, I had an artist ask me to do a letter of recommendation. And mm -hmm. so I looked at the call, and the first thing on the call, I knew she didn't have. And I said, right. you have it? She said, no, but I'm gonna apply because I'm, someone told me I should apply. Mm -hmm. I said, you understand if you don't have the basic things that they're asking you, right. they're not even going to look at your application. But well, I, I don't care. I'm going to just take. I'm going to, you know, I was like. Nope, I can't write you a letter. Ego can come to you. Yeah. She sent it out this yeah. year. And yeah. get these things yeah. that they're asking you to get. here. Ego's here. Yeah. 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 Similar yeah. to the yeah. NFT uh, statement I made, like, you might not want to spend a lot of time investing in, into that if that's not something you're gonna focus on. If you wanna pursue these higher level fellowships right. and grant programs, then right. maybe you need to put a little bit more work into writing your statement, telling your story, yep. uh, your you know performance and your CV and your profile mm -hmm. and your website and, yep. and all the basics. Uh, but also I, I've been involved in some grant review panels and sometimes <laughs> it's only 10, 12 people that submit. There's that. Yeah. They're, 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 they're only giving out so many opportunities and so many slots. On the flip side, of course, then there's some where there's thousands of people that do apply, so it is a numbers game. Uh, you guys use the word rejected. With that being said, they can't accept everybody, so it's right. not a personal rejection. Right, right. There is only so I take many spaces. <laughs> so I just want to keep that in consideration and not let that just yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I would definitely like say that it's not a rejection, it's just continuously keep going. And I have people, and artists that apply all the time that I'm like, well, we, we need a portfolio, we need everything, you know? They're like, I don't even have an artist statement, can you help me with that? And so at that point, I'm like, okay, I think there's a couple more steps. You need to go through that checklist and really go in. And we help everyone, you know, we, we help the, the new, new artists that really don't have any idea. And we tell them it would be amazing if you did have all this, not only for us too, to be able to, to accept you and, and to have a space here, but for future. I mean, right. we try and tell them, listen, you might not have an Instagram, but make sure you have at least a portfolio, your your right. statement, something. Sometimes uh, we go on the website and they'll just start talking about their life. I'm like, but I want to know your artwork. Oh, yeah, I'd love to know about your life, you know, it's great to know, but we want to know more about you as an artist. And that's a huge part of it. But just, yeah, it's not rejection, it's just keep going. Going, keep going. This uh, ties into something about, about, oh, sorry. I just, for those of you who have experienced, you can't win if you don't play. So <laughs> even if you get a, you didn't get it letter, you got your artwork in front of a panel of people that would never have seen it otherwise. And every time you write another grant, you get better at it. Mm -hmm. 
And I once went to a panel similar to this and one of the most valuable nuggets that I have kept close to my heart to this day is one of the more respected, successful artists in my mind up on an ivory tower said it's a 10% rule. If you get 10% into the shows and grants and things you apply for, that's 90% rejection, but you're winning. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'll leave you with this one. In football, if a quarterback has a 66% uh, completion percentage, that's like very good. In basketball, if you shoot 50%, that's very, very good. In baseball, if you hit 333% batting average, that's like really good. Nobody hits 100% of the time, to your point. And if you, even and in, in, in poker, the last one, if you win in poker 10% of the time in poker tournaments, that's like world-class level. So in all reality, so yes, maybe you need to increase your sample size, so those 10%, it's not 10% of 10, maybe it's 10% of 100 or 10% of 1,000. He did, he said he applied typically for 100 things a year. So if he got 10 wins, 10% he felt. And then do you yeah. have the bandwidth, the, the portfolio of work, and the actual energy and ability Time. to fulfill those 10 opportunities that right. you might actually mm -hmm. obtain? Right. And a lot of people don't even think about that. They spread themselves too thin. Yep. And unfortunately, they get show, they get artwork stuck in Virginia. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is, I, I heard yep. just go for the no. Right. Go for the no. Let them say no to you. You got to get a certain amount of no's to get a yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I could turn this into a phrase though. It says, should art schools start taking a more active role in educating? Let's say, art schools should start taking a more active role in educating young artists and the importance of artist statement, photographing their work, this is all on us artists, um, photographing the work properly, entrepreneurship, how to write the CV, necessities of providing certificates of authenticity, and the list goes on and on and on. And it's all, uh, all the resources are there. So. Our school didn't do that for me, so I had to find other ways to figure it out. I had to get a mentor. Uh, Berks mentored me through a lot of that stuff. The Cultural Council is a version of that. Now No More Starving Artists yeah. provides professional development. So it's all out here. Um, the art schools really should, but also high schools should teach you how to balance your checkbook, but they don't do that. So <laughs> let's not, we can't put it all back on the education system. Maybe they're just narrowing their focus or maybe, maybe it's messed up. We don't know, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn that into a statement and I just, not I just ask you guys. Okay. If, you, if the schools did it, it would be amazing. Sure. But the best thing about it is being able to have these local communities be able to teach you. And then you're with your local artist, you're, you're being able to find that local mentor. So I kind of like add to it, if, 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 if it's not taught in the school system, which I wish it did, because that was huge for me coming into the business aspect and they had nothing, nothing I figured about it. <laughs> and, um, but I got to meet so many amazing people that, I, that have now taught me so much and to this day I, I continue my relationship with them and it just grows exponentially. Um, so it just, which is kind of a good and- The on the job training is actually uh, a lot more valuable. I mean, yeah. that's just a, my opinion. After school, um, just getting thrown into the fire is basically what got everything tuned up. I mean, it took a while, yeah. but. Also an expense thing, because I mean, your master's degree program is entrepreneurship. Yeah, if you can stick it through to the MFA. Yeah. Um, next one's about our Young Masters program, near and dear to me, the No More Starving Artists Foundation uh, implemented it. It's a mentorship and scholarship program. Um, how do you think your role in your prospective professions will help the new generation of art professionals grow in their free, uh, future careers? So skewing it a little bit younger because we concentrate on um, uh, mostly high school kids that are, that are definitely focused on heading into a creative career. And so we try to provide opportunities for them to show and learn the nuts and bolts of the fine art world and just uh, entrepreneurship in general. So where do you guys stand in this kind of, uh, on, on the young artist, young aspiring artist edge of things? Uh, what do you do, what do you see, what do you think? I mean, I think it's good for me as an, as an artist to be available. Speak out, I don't want to hear you in front of your camera. No, it's a, it's, to me it's a, it's a lot about, you know, she can say a lot about willingness, right? What am I willing to do as an artist, as a, as a mentor, as, as a teacher, as a facilitator? What I'm willing to do to for the community at large, right? And, and, and if someone asks me uh, you know, for help, am I willing to do it? Am I willing to answer the phone? Am I willing to call the person back? Am I willing to do my, I mean, my most viable asset of an ordinary time, right? What, 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 what am I going to give my time to you to sit there and talk to you about Instagram for, for, you know, for half an hour when I think it's the easiest thing in the world? To you, it might be like, you know, rocket science. So, 
and just being patient, right? And I think that, you know, as educators and, and mentors and whatever, it, it, it's, it's time, it's patience, it's, it's uh, you know, empathy, sympathy, and uh, allowing yourself not to be too aggravated by, by, um, by questions that, you know, that, that might create you. I'm glad to support uh, young aspiring artists, one of which is here, uh, at a came to the program early on with the opportunity so they can get their feet wet and get to learn, thankfully, uh, uh, with a, uh, an inexpensive cost with the Zero for Spaces initiative, um, because unfortunately not everybody can go to art school and not everybody can get into one of these residencies right out of college or when they're young. Um, so we give these young artists the opportunity to be alongside, once again, mid-career established artists uh, alike. And we've seen, you know, artists' lives transform in short periods of time. Some of them are off doing their own things, you now traveling and doing residencies all over the world because they had that early exposure to their peers, their contemporaries. And we really, my, my biggest thing is creating the platform, creating the container and the space for creative collisions, connections, inspirations, so on and so forth. And I've seen Scott mentor multiple people uh, in and out of Zero Empty Spaces, Pat. Sure. And, and Pat's now has artwork in restaurants yeah, sure. all throughout uh, Palm Beach County. So just creating that space and container so that there can be that creative collision and connection because you never know what will come from that. And I, and I say take advantage of every opportunity, every uh, gathering, every meeting, every show. Um, continue and asking questions. I, we get everybody, uh, including you know parents that come in and say, oh my God, I would love, my, my child is, is in school and she's really getting into, he or she is really, really interested in the arts. Um, can I bring them here? Absolutely, come in, sign up for our email list, come to all of our events, all of our lectures, all of the panel discussions, um, and ask questions. The kids will come in and, and want a, a tour, absolutely. Well, let's schedule a tour, bring in, at, Bring in your class and we'll, we'll give you a full tour of everything. And it's really taking advantage um, of things that are completely free and yeah. that'll just benefit you. And also something about it, a lot of my collective friends, they bring their kids with them to these events. Mm -hmm. Right, and that, that's good. Like, get these kids interested in, 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 in the arts and, and like, don't um, say, oh, can, can my kid come? Of course they can come. Like, hold their hand, you know, right. bring anything. <laughs> you know, but, but it has to be, I mean, you have to, Kind of be proactive in, you know, inviting. You know, how many how many people at, at, the, at the opening did did you grab, did you invite here? Right. Did you, did you make a Facebook a Facebook invitation? Did you did you do that? Right. I put out an invitation for 300 people. You know, on, don't, well, somebody came, but it's like like what are, what are you doing to get people behind you? You know, even like, like, even though, even if they don't come, they know that it's happening. Mm -hmm. Right. I like to create this kind of fear this fear of missing out. Concept, right? Like, I wish I was there. I need a Scotty J painting. You know, I wish I had one. I wish I was there. So then they buy, right? So, you know, it, it really is incumbent upon us, again, as, as an artist, to kind of be proactively pushing and bring everybody in, kids, kids included. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, covering the belief that uh, it's a popular belief and it's shown to be true to a degree that uh, one needs to be a deceased artist in order to be considered a master. <laughs> and in permanent collections, museums, and handled by art dealers, auction houses, etc. cetera. Um, a piece of advice, one piece of advice for a living artist to acquire these same level of respect and acquire these opportunities. And you guys are gonna be killer at this because most of your rhetoric has been about personal responsibility and taking, owning your situation, whether it's headed in the right direction or the wrong direction. I, I think more than that, just um, enjoy your own art. Right. If you don't, if you don't love your own art, there's, there's no reason to love it. Right. And I, I think that that's really it's just mm -hmm. and, and like don't get caught up in uh, I love it kind of like this lack of perfectionism that, that I have that I can deal with. It's like you know, put, put, it's like it's it's, it's put the painting stop painting, put it out there. It's fine. Right. It's gonna it's gonna be the painting is done. Right. And I think that you know that that is a big problem with a lot of artists that we're, we're we're so stuck in mind this has to be perfect. It's like just move on. And I think that when I, when I do that, you know, I'm able to take ownership of what, what my art is. You know, my art, my art's not for everybody, you know, it's, it is what it is, you know, but the thing is, is that I, I am able to um, explain it 
and in, and uh, back it up a little bit, I guess, so, so to speak. So it's like it's a so I, I it really is taking ownership of, of, of your of your of your product, you know, and don't be fearful of, of answering questions. And just saying, I don't, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, what, what is that painting about? It's like it's just it's a fish. But on the other hand, you know, I think it's important. I have one of my good best friends in life is, is a professor, you know, at, at, in New York City, and there's all, there's all these like work, work, work and around, it's like an art theory kind of thing. It's like we need to be able to, I go on these Zoom calls with these artists that are from Yale or other places. We need to be able to explain and, and our art. You know, mm -hmm. people want a narrative of what we're talking about. Right? Yeah. And then and these, these living artists, these popular artists, these, they, they, they have they have a, a voice, right? And I, and I need, and it, it's important for, for me at least to find the voice behind what, what, I'm, what I'm talking about. You know, and it, whether it is right or wrong, whatever it is, I, it's, it's something that can, um, that can back it up. I want to tie it back to, I can't remember who said it, or oh, it was you, that, that people are buying the artists, right? It goes, I use this quote all the time, and it's from a famous art critic. It's, um, there really is no such thing as art, there are only artists. And that goes to that you gotta you gotta own it, you gotta know it, you gotta be it, and it'll just bleed out from there. Sure. Does it automatically create a legacy? No, all this other footwork has to be involved as well, <clears throat> because we live in a commercial situation. But that is totally it. So if you're disconnected from it or you're not feeling it, that just means you gotta adjust and continue. Yeah, and, and, and I think when I accepted the fact that I'm not like painting like portraits or whatever, like the Mona Lisa, and I'm just painting the way I paint, right? Um, and, and, I, and I own that. That's why I think that I'm getting, I have the success that I do, and I can, and, I, and, I, and it, it's fine with me, right? But some for some other people, they're like, oh, well, I, just, I, I can't, I can't live that way, right? And I think that that that's when you know there's a difference between being a successful, happy, content artist versus someone that's a frustrated, struggling, you know. Artists. Starving, starving, artists. Right? starving. <laughs> you know, starving, yeah, starving, and, and you know, you know, mentally struggling, right? Yeah. And it's like I talked to someone about this too. It's like I went I, again. I, I'm going to the show at Spectrum the next week, right? And the question is always going to be, you know, did you sell something? Yeah. That, that's always going to be. Always going to ask me that, right? But the, but I have to have the, the mindset of like you know, I, I sold myself. <laughs> right, that's what it is, and then we'll see what that gets me. But at, at this point, that's that's the answer that I got to, have to get. If not, I'll go crazy. I'll go crazy. Like it's a it's a waste of time. So it really is, it's it's a mind it's a mindset kind of game that that, that, I, that I play with myself to keep us keep keep me singing, keep me happy, and to keep me painting the way I want to paint. You know, my advice to living artists is to step outside of your comfort zone. I'm a big fan and inspired by Basquiat, and if you watch the documentaries, you know, they were pushing minimalism to the point it was academic back in the late 70s at that time, and he started coloring outside the lines and really brought us to where we are now, in part. Um, and I really admire and respect artists that do step outside their comfort zone, try new things. It doesn't have to necessarily be risky, but uh, there is one artist uh, here that I know wasn't the most comfortable with TikToks and Instagram stories, and she's become one of the most coveted uh, painters in Palm Beach County um, because she's very vulnerable. She steps, out, steps outside of her comfort zone. She shows her true colors, and it shines through in her work. Um, and I would, I would encourage you guys to be more like Sarah LaPierre. And, and really, you know, if you find an artist that is living, that is having success, kind of to the point of, um, looking at their profile, looking at their CV, looking at their resume, looking at their website, whatever you can find, looking at their social media, and kind of mimic that within your own capacity, within your own style. Um, if it's proven to be beneficial and successful for one, it probably could be beneficial and successful for others. And we don't have to struggle or starve as artists. We can be successful. Can I tell you one thing too? Yeah. You know how many people have, like, I wear my, I own your brand, right? I, I wear my t-shirts all the time. Um, so many people have said to me, I, 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 I love these shirts. I said, what do you, you're an artist, go to buy some fabric paint, paint some on a, on a paint, you can do it yourself, right? Oh, I can't do that. All right. <laughs> you know, what, am I, what, 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 could, what could you do? I love my Scotty J shirt. I, right? Of course. Of course. Of course. The, the, it's like the, 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 the cost more they did the, 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 the war, right? But it's like, but so many people are, are so like, it was just like, I can't, I'm not going to do that. 
or I can't do that, or I don't want to do that, or what else? Okay, then what do you what, what do you want to tell you? So, but it's like, but it's like, if you don't try, you'll never you'll never know. If it, if you could be the t-shirt king of the world, mm. you know, this is or, a good uh, this is a good transition because uh, you guys did this on purpose the way this is laid out. Oh yeah, well, you know, Trina crafted I'm OCD. <laughs> Right where you are talking right now is right on the edge before you step over into artist ego. And the actual question is, and we know the answer to it, should gallerists and curators have to deal with the ego of an established artist regardless of their sales status? And that's also could be a statement. No, no one should have to deal with, it, no. with the artist ego. But that's right on the, on the flip side of the oh coin, right? God. Sometimes it can go over the top and who knows where that line is. It's different for everybody, but as artists, we got to kind of dance that line. Where do you, where do you guys stand on the, um, I think it, you besides be, the obvious you, you try to be a gentleman. I'll, I will never forget that I was, I was the first art school owner at all. And I helped, I volunteered, we were, we were, we were picking up, we were hanging the, the art, right? And this woman, I don't know who it was, she may be in the room, I have no idea. She's not, I'm sure, right? <laughs> and, and she was like, my, I don't like the way that this is, this is home. And I was like, this is not gonna be good, right? Because I'm sitting there, right? And it was, I think mean, Andrew and, and they were sitting down and it was like, honey, take your art, take your painting and you go on a walk, right? We don't, we don't, we, I, we can't be, we can't walk through a room and like, like we own the place, right? It's an opportunity that I've, I've had that's changed my, changed my life. I, I was at, you know, one of our favorite shows, right? And I remember we were sitting at, at, at the, at the, um, the end of the show, and one of the artists were complaining about what was happening, and a woman said to me, "Why? How come you're not, how come you're not complaining about everything?" And I said, "Well, I'm just grateful to be here, right?" Mm -hmm. She said, "I want to work with you, right?" Mm -hmm. And <laughs> two weeks later, she called me up, and I was, I was like, you know, I was in our Basel the, 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 the next, the next show, mm -hmm. right? You know, and I, and I have a giant complaint of legs, and I've been all over the place with these other people, so it's like, you know, only because I was, because I was like, not my ego right. didn't get, didn't get yeah. ahead of me, yeah. right? And that's that's what's so important because it's like you're just they were just trying their best, right? It's just like it's like it was like a, an experimental it's an experimental show in the beginning, but don't make it more difficult for the people that are trying to run it, right? Right? And it's like and I've, I've heard that that over and over again. There's that that that, that uh, all of a sudden I'm the most important person in the room. I, I think right? it's a very fine line between being being vulnerable, but also knowing you know you can be very confident know what you want know how to how you want to display it and that's a, that's fine you know you're you made the art you know exactly how you want to display it, how you want to hang it but it's also a fine line if you're collaborating with different galleries with different artists and they have their way of doing that's things right. you have to be respectful um so there's it's, it's a very it's you kind of have to play with it and and read the room I think the, the fine line also, if I may interject again, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to just ask questions, but um, just as an artist, it takes a certain amount of ego, and I perform too, so this ties into performance too, it takes a certain amount of ego to put yourself out there and do it, especially yeah, if it's live, right? Mm -hmm. So it's required, that ego is required. Um, and then sometimes I think people, artists, get muddled over, over which part of the ego is the negative part and which part is the positive part and which part should I let shine and which part should I be trying to keep under control and keep you know behind closed doors or whatever it takes for the studio practice to occur. And I think that, again, is on us to really start to figure, that's psychology, I mean, we really gotta start to figure that out so that we can use it as the tool that it is rather than just this thing that you just kinda throw around the world and just hope for the best because yeah. you're gonna ruffle feathers and you're not gonna read the room and you're just gonna blurt out guilty and you're gonna do all kinds of stuff <laughs> that you shouldn't do. It's gonna hurt your career in the long run. Like, remember, I saw that guy at that one show and I never wanna deal with him. The opposite of your story, right? Yeah. Never wanna deal with that guy yeah. again, so. I mean, I, I, I avoid the you shoulders and I don't wanna be a you shoulder, right? Dave, you yeah. have a point? You, you should, you should Sorry. I, I think ego is fine Entitlement is not. That's a t-shirt. <laughs> Hold on. That's I right. Just, you know, uh, it, I appreciate strong-willed people. <laughs> you know, I think that's great. Um, I think there is a bit of us understanding that we, you know, you're not existing in a vacuum. And there are real people behind when, you know, when this stuff is happening, um, and they can decide in one way or shape, 
you know, or, or form not to work with you again, or mm -hmm. somehow you don't get on a list to, you know, to do something. So I, I'm not saying that's happening, but you know, <laughs> it, there's a lot of entitlement out there. And yeah. you know, if, yeah. if everybody feels entitled to the same five spots or whatever, you know, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And good luck to so what now, okay, I didn't get this thing, move on, right? right? And like, again, like do what you, what your, keep your vision what it's supposed to be, and it's just like, you know. There's a way to go about it professionally yes. and respectfully. Yes. Uh, you can have confidence. You can be uh, very content with your practice and, and your profession. Uh, but yeah, there is, a, there is a line. I pride myself on being humble. We had very humble beginnings, as Scott just mentioned. He was part of um, self-funding art fairs for the betterment of artists. And I don't let my story detract from that. Uh, and that's kind of my guiding principle. And I gravitate towards people. I, I haven't got a chance to meet you before, but for, for being an executive director of a space like this in Palm Beach County, you come off as very grounded, a very you know down to earth, uh, approachable, presentable, and versus, unfortunately, some of the traditional gallerists mm -hmm. on the island and in Palm Beach County that, you know, they don't give a shit if yeah. I do art fair art week, have 27 artist studios, they, you know, look at your belt, they look at your shoes, they look at your watch, and have a conversation with you. Like, How is that gonna move anything forward? So as long as, you know, there is a fine line. And then, I may, I may be a little different because I'm from Broward County. No, you're but, right. Uh, you know, as, long as, as long as you Not are on the side of uh, being professional, there is a way, um, and thankfully my ego died a long time ago, so I don't gotta worry about that anymore. Yeah, it's, a tough, it's tough for us as creators because, uh, there is that edge that we like about a Basquiat or something where there is an obvious like flamboyancy or, or just this fire that is part of the ego and that's the positive part. So Wait, and just to work out make, that make yourself available. Like if you're an artist and there's and there's a show going on, like I don't help them out. Right? So you so you, so you can like see what's going on. Right? I didn't I didn't I, I hung on a lot of the nails in for the show over here. I never did that before. Yep. Measured and all that sort of stuff, right? But I just to learn. So I know when I'm going down to Miami, I have, a, I have a good picture, right? So, but it's just like, I need to make yourself available to them so they know who you are. So when it comes time to, um, you know, like, you know, Basquiat versus Scotty J, I'm like Scotty J, right? <laughs> Uh, I think we've kind of covered this. The uh, what, what? In fact, this is mostly what we covered, which I kind of love. So it kind of negates this a little bit. Explain artists uh, what their responsibility is to be professional in the art world. And that's that's we circled back on that a lot because we are saying it's it's on the individual to do that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, if you have thoughts on that, that's cool. You, something you might have um, forgotten to mention. I'm gonna move to the last question here, and it's tell us some of the new things you'll be doing for the artists. Uh, and the community in general uh, coming up in this new calendar year. We're rolling out a series of workshops uh, through Zero Spaces that we are going to make available to our resident artists as well as outside artists alike uh, on topics that I think we've all kind of alluded to on this panel are very beneficial. Things like bio writing, things like having a professional headshot. I'm gonna bring in an arts and entertainment lawyer to speak about contracts and to speak about some of those things that unfortunately, you know, you get into a space like this, or not this space, maybe you get into another space and if they don't provide you a contract for the work that they're gonna be selling, that's a problem. Um, and then, you know, other things like uh, branding and, and, and other uh, facets like that, we're gonna offer through Zero Empty Spaces. Uh, we're very excited about, we're very excited to launch the e-commerce not just for Zero Empty Spaces artists, but for um, the greater artist community alike, because we know not every artist also wants to pay to be on Artsy. And we're not gonna charge people to be on this platform. Um, so those are two things I'd say to look out to. And I'm, uh, I, I don't think I mentioned in, in complete, but uh, this Arts Writing Scholarship I'm gonna launch during Fort Lauderdale Art Design Week is in memory of a friend of mine that passed away that was also a blogger. Uh, she was a PR director for Three Points and um, she really taught me the importance of covering the arts from an editorial perspective, from a writing perspective. And I can't harp enough about with all the cuts to arts in general, if nobody writes about the arts, how are people outside the arts supposed to find out? And we got one guy writing for the Sun Sentinel, he doesn't even live here anymore. Mm -hmm. God bless him, but you know, it, it's unfortunate. So hopefully uh, all these things, you know, rising tides raise all ships can make a, a 
bigger impact and uh, I'm open to you know supporting if you guys are here supporting the Burkses, supporting the arts in Palm Beach County supporting continuum supporting the more starving artists this panel this art center um, I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your lives you don't have to be here so you know that's what I mean by rising tides raise all ships this is how we move the needle forward and this is how we make a bigger impact for all Um, so, Evan mentioned earlier, uh, May 20th, we're going to try this. Uh, it's uh, Artist Open Studio Day, uh, 12 to 5 p.m. Um, locations throughout Palm Beach County. Just another way to connect artists directly with patrons and all of that. Hopefully it will be a big success. We can make it even bigger, a full weekend, you know, all that sort of stuff as we move on. So uh, we're really excited to try this out. I think it'll be a neat opportunity. Um, we also have a series of workshops through our Institute of Cultural Advancement. I talked a little bit about those. The next one is December 1st. Um, and there's a whole s a slew of those that are specific to artists' issues. Um, so, you know, go on our website. If you're not getting our emails, sign up for them and read them. Um, <laughs> if you don't have a listing on the artist database it's absolutely free to do I would encourage you to do that um, and you know we, we hope to see you at, at events and opportunities um, you know back when we were talking earlier about artist responsibility and all that if you're gonna play the game play the game right show up um, hone your skills uh, make sure that you've got the right materials that you need to to be as competitive and professional as you can. And there are entities like No More Starving Artists, the Zero Empty Spaces, and the Cultural Council that can help you do that. Um, and that's why we exist. So utilize us. Help us help, us help you. Mm -hmm. um, my main goal is to get all that artist studio stuff sticking on my house. And uh, figure that out. But the, the purpose, I actually did 20 because... No, I have a great space in my in my in my property across the street here, and I have a great backyard. And I've I've branded the the Outback Gallery, which is the Outback the Outback in my house, right? And uh, just to use that more. You know, last time we had thirteen artists at, at a show during the art festival. I want to do more of that. I want to um you know do have art salons. I want people to come over there and paint with me. Other artists to come paint with me, and you know and just to help them, we can create our own content, right? That that's what it's, that's what it's about these days is. Creating content so we can both, you know, benefit from each other and make that an open space for, for creativity. It's 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 cool back there. We all hang out. So, but and just support support each other. You know, I, I'm, you know, I've been gifted, you know, blessed to be part of the Commercial Arts Arts Foundation, and just to hopefully use that platform more for all of us so we can we can all, you know, ride the wave together. That's that's the goal. So, uh, yeah, the more we do that, the more we can do that. Um, kind of tying in everything. Unfortunately, we don't have as the opportunity to create these workshops, but I, anybody who comes up to me, I will certainly, you know, send them your way. Um, we have a great opportunity to sign up for the email list, to know all of our events. We have our, all of our events listed on our website, but there's always constant times where um, somebody will come up to us and say, can we do a lecture? So we'll do a pop-up. Um, so things come up all the time through the showroom. Um, our next exhibition is December 8th, but we want to just really be open here to collaborate and, and kind of we touch base on it, but um, if you're coming to one of our shows, invite 10, 20 friends. And if these 20, 10, 20 friends invite them, you know, they, they'll start inviting more people. And it's really, we want to just showcase the showroom and try and branch out as much. We're relatively new. I mean, we've been only here for five years and I've been here um, and we are constantly changing and growing and, and really branching out more and more to the community, to artists, to galleries, local or international. But we always say if you're gonna be featured in one of our exhibitions or you currently have a show, showroom or booth in the showroom, put your first, your best foot forward, um, really kind of come into the showroom and do your best and, and, and meet as many people as you can and connect as much as you can. Um, there's certain people here that really just leave everything and, and they say, why, why don't I have sales? Why, what's going on? I'm like, well, have you created anything? Have you tried anything? Have you branched out? Have you, have you really done the most that you possibly can? And that can be said for artists in general. Um, if you get rejected, don't get down, don't go into a spiral and say, you know, you really have to just pick yourself back up and, and, and trying to apply. Um, and, 
really continue. And for our showroom and for email, freedom, come to all our friends. Um, hopefully we're gonna be collaborating with, with more and more organizations and, and groups still. I just wanted to add one thing, and specifically about this space in particular, uh, mentioned earlier about local artists versus American artists versus like blue chip artists. And I've always kind of struggled with how do local artists get to that next level, that inevitable level of success. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I've been a lot of places, place like this really, and inviting and, and having Continuum participate, which brings in and facilitates the inclusion of more local artists, really does create a springboard to allow artists to be alongside $350,000 painting. So, I mean, it's really it's a really powerful thing. I've driven by this place, I don't wanna say a thousand times, I've driven by this place dozens of times out of in Broward, but um, this is a really great space, it shows very well, and it's a, I can obviously see it's very diverse, so um, I would encourage more of you guys to try to, as she mentioned, maybe you can't afford the whole booth by yourself, but maybe you could chip in with a couple artists, maybe you could, I don't know if this is a thing, get a grant with the No More Serving Artists Foundation. It is a yeah. Okay, it is. Sorry. <laughs> it is. Why well, the culture council? Yeah, so, so that was, I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Uh, no, and, and some of our artists here, um, throughout the years, our galleries have also recruited artists that they found through the showroom. Mm -hmm. And those galleries do shows across the country. Um, we hold our art fair at the Palm Beach Convention Center every February during President's Day weekend. And uh, myself and Paola curate our booth. So artists, we hand select about 30, 40 pieces, but there's artists here that we've taken to the show that they are so grateful and thankful because otherwise they wouldn't be able to afford going to a big show like that and being in front of these world-renowned collectors. And we're showcasing next to you know Picassos and Renos and, and everything, but being able to be there representing the showroom and having the group of artists that, I, I mean, I'm so proud of and very grateful to have, but we'd love to have them go to the show and represent their artwork and come and invite their family and friends and take a picture and then showcase, you know, walk around the show. So it's always really, really great. And that's the, one of my favorite things is just being able to connect everybody and then the smiles and, and happiness just really makes it. Opportunity to uh, say that I took uh, took responsibility for the panel. Barbara Cheeves was supposed to be doing this. Yes. Um, unfortunately, she uh, has COVID. She's okay. She did a little felt good and then felt bad again. So she found out that she is. But uh, so we'll be wishing her well. And I want to appreciate the opportunity to, to take over for her. Give it up for our panelists. How about that? <laughs> Very insightful. Appreciate it. Anything I need to add, Trina? All good. Guys, please. Fantastic. Peruse, Thank you, guys. Check out the rest of the work if you had a chance to see the entire showroom. There's so much to see. You got any questions? Um, just uh, tackle one of these guys on, on the way out. Corner of <laughs>